I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Diabetes, a disease, a lifestyle disease that plagues millions and millions of people across the world. There are more people who die of diabetes and diabetic related disease than the total amount of people that we've lost to COVID. Yeah, we wouldn't believe that because the media attention is on COVID and yes, we have lost loved ones and people have died. But the numbers, the number of deaths of people who we have lost to COVID doesn't even come close to the amount of deaths of people who die because of diabetes every single year. And yet we struggle. We struggle all the time. Some people live with diabetes. Some people live with an entire life. A lot of people sadly don't believe that it can be reversed. And there's no magic medicine that can do that for you. There's no magic food. There's no magic chant. There's no magic meditation that can take away your diabetes. The only thing that can is your lifestyle. Let me tell you a little story. In the Amazon region in South America, there are two villages. These two villages are separated by 20 kilometers of land. In the first village, an eagle flies into this village. The natives in this village see this eagle as a sign of good luck. And they celebrate, they have prayers, they have a ritual, they have a ceremony, and they believe that their village is now blessed and they should continue to stay there because the soil will be fertile for their crops to grow. The same village, 20 kilometers down the river, an eagle flies into this village. The natives see this eagle as an omen of death and they say we have been cursed and they pack up all of their belongings and they move further down the river to find new land. The same kind of people, the same bird, the same experience, but a completely different reaction. What's the difference? Mindset. The day we decide to believe that the human body is capable of reversing most diseases, when we give it a chance and when we do the right thing, we begin to heal, we begin to recover. But the mindset of millions of people are such right now that when you put on a diabetic medication or a thyroid medication, you are told this is a lifetime medication. And that's completely inaccurate. If it was a lifetime medication, how are there millions of people who are no longer on medication? Their own doctors have slowly reduced them off and eventually stopped their medication. So the first thing to reverse your type two diabetes is change your mindset. If you don't believe you can do it, it's never going to happen. But when you believe you can do it, it's going to happen. And you also got to be careful of people who promise you shortcuts and say, hey, take this magic supplement and your diabetes will disappear. You know, do this magic exercise and your diabetes will disappear. It never works. There are no shortcuts. Today, I'm going to discuss with you the commonalities that we have seen in lifestyle changes that people who have, who have made across the world with severe type 2 diabetes and today, they're diabetic free. Who's put them off medication? Their own doctors. And that's how integrative medicine works beautifully. You change your lifestyle, your own doctors will work with you to get you off your medication. So when we pull up data of thousands of people across the world over the last eight years that we've been treating with diseases, I'm going to share with you today some commonalities. Remember, everyone is bio-individual. What works for someone doesn't have to work for someone else. But the principles that I'm sharing with you today has worked for almost everyone. Let's break it down into our four verticals and start off with nutrition. No, there is no magic food. Yes, by adding cinnamon powder, post your meal to a glass of water will definitely bring down your blood sugar levels. But what happens when you're not having cinnamon? The idea is we can use foods to control our blood sugar levels, but we need to address the root cause of why we have diabetes in the first place. Why do we have insulin insensitivity? Why aren't our pancreas producing insulin in the right quantities and at the right time? So when we break it down to nutrition, Number one, people have stopped eating late dinners and brought down their meal timings. Having late night meals will bring you a fluctuation in your blood sugar levels the next morning when you wake up and you know that. If you've partied late, had your meals late, the next morning you know your blood sugar levels are all over the place. So what does that teach us? Earlier dinners are better for us. Now some very severely diabetic people need to eat every two hours. Okay, that may not apply for you, but for everyone else, Try to start eating within, sun, within the first hour of sunset, with sunset, or one hour after sunset. That's number one. If you can't do that and you feel hungry, okay. 
At least have your meal at 7.30 or 8.30, but stop eating at 10.30 and 11 in the night, number one. The next important rule, it doesn't matter what you're eating if you're diabetic. The good stuff doesn't matter if you're eating too quickly, you're not chewing your food, and you're eating under stress. Yep, it sounds very simple, but you know simplicity is the new luxury. It works, okay? When you eat your food, you digest carbs and fat in your mouth. You start the process of digestion of carbs and fat in your mouth. When we don't chew our food, we send the bulk of the food to our stomach. Everything changes. The fluctuation of your stomach acid levels, digestive enzymes, insulin, and everything. So eat your food, chew it, and try to eat your meals at the same time every day. Very, very important. We have a biorhythm within us. Your biorhythm doesn't care about your meeting. It doesn't care about your delays in your food habits. The sooner you can align your eating timings to a fixed rhythm every day, the better it's gonna show up in your blood sugar levels. Low carb, I'm not saying no carb. No carb is stupidity, okay? Keto is not no carb. Keto is low carb. But you don't even need keto to reverse type two diabetes. You can, if it suits you and you're doing it the right way, absolutely do it. All you need to do is lower your carbs a little bit at each meal, even by one tablespoon at each meal. Multiply how much you will lower your carbs by reducing the carbs at one, at each meal by one tablespoon. Multiply it by the amount of meals that you have in a week and seven days in a week. Convert that into calories and you would have lowered your carbs by that much. It will make a massive difference. You don't have to go no carb, you don't have to go extremely low carb. You've got to be smart carb. Refined carbs are going to damage anyone, whether you have diabetes or not. So let's not even talk about that. My complex carbs. Can, my, can a diabetic eat rice? Of course a diabetic can eat rice. Okay? As long as you're exercising, looking after your stress level, sleeping well, and you're combining your rice with a vegetable source and a lentil, and you're eating the right quantity. But the problem is when you look at people's plates, it's a pile of rice, a small bowl of lentils, a small bowl of vegetables. Won't work for you. And of course, if you reduce the total amount of rice you eat, your sugar levels are obviously gonna come down. So when you go low carb, the biggest problem that people end up in, they don't balance the protein and the fats. If you're going low carb, your macros have to increase with your protein and your fats. So when you go low carb, you increase your proteins and you increase your fats. Do never, never ever go low carb and low fat. You require fat for insulin. You require fat for every single hormone in the human body. There are good fats and there are bad fats. Make sure that you stay with the good fats, okay? Early dinner, keep a gap of at least three to four hours between dinner and bedtime. Now, if you're sitting up watching Netflix at two in the morning, you're obviously gonna feel hungry. That's a problem that you need to fix. In the last part of the nutrition angle is your gut health. If you are not looking after the health of your gut, you cannot reverse your type two diabetes. Every hormone is regulated by the gut. Insulin insensitivity in your cells is regulated by your gut. So if you're constantly acidic, constipated, loose motions, IBS, constantly bloated, you must have a gut recovery plan in your protocol to reverse your type 2 diabetes. Diabetes is not just about insulin levels. It is way beyond that. It's about inflammation in the body. It's about your immune system. It's about your gut health. It's about other hormones as well, working in conjunction with just insulin. The problem is people only take out one part of the body with a disease and they focus on that. Never forget that every part in the human body is interconnected with one another. You have a problem with your liver, you have a problem with diabetes. You have a problem with digestion, you have a problem with diabetes. You have a problem with your heart, or you have a problem with diabetes, it affects your heart and your brain and everything else. So it's always a mind-body connection, look at your health holistically. Let's move to our next pillar, which is exercise. Let's keep it as simple as possible. It needs to be regular, you need to be consistent. And what's really worked, for so many of our people across the world, and it's a good habit if you're diabetic or not, 10 minutes after your meal, try to walk for 10 minutes. So if you have breakfast, after 10 minutes, try to walk for 10 minutes. After lunch, after 10 minutes, try to walk for 10 minutes. After dinner, do the same thing. Plan a call, listen to music, listen to a podcast, or just walk. When you do this, do this, start doing this for three to four to five days, you will see your blood sugar levels start to change. So if you're sedentary, you're gonna have fluctuation with your blood sugar levels. If you're sitting all day, you're gonna have blood sugar level problems. Make sure you are active. Let's move straight into sleep, which is pretty much direct. If you're sleep deprived, you're, you're never gonna be able to reverse your type two diabetes because you're constantly gonna have inflammation 
and diabetes is an inflammatory condition and fluctuations every single morning with your blood sugar levels because you were sleep deprived the previous night. Learn to sleep, retrain your body to sleep. How? There are several videos that we've done out there, how to do it, but sleep is an important part of your recovery protocol. And the last one, stress. Every single doctor will ask you the first question when your blood sugar levels start to go up is, are you stressed? And yes, why? Because chronic stress is directly connected with diabetes and your blood sugar levels and every other hormone. So while you're trying to reverse your type 2 diabetes, you also learn how, you have to learn how to change your relationship with stress. <clears throat> Everyone has stress, accept it. It's never going to change. It doesn't mean it's a problem. But what's in our control is to change the way we relate to stress. Stress is never your problem. Stress is the way you relate to a person, a thing, or an event. So it is up to you to change the way you relate to a person, a thing, or an event. Whether you meditate, you do yoga, you do pranayama, you exercise, you have a hobby, whatever it is, do more of the things that relaxes you. Do more of the things that keeps you calm and makes you happy. Because every time you create a happy state of mind, you have a happy state of body. Everything else in your body works better whether it's recovery, whether it's prevention, and all of these things. Smoking and alcohol. The more you smoke, whether it's shisha or cigarettes, the more you'll have fluctuation in your blood sugar levels. So you've got to cut down on your smoking or at least plant that seed in your mind that it is affecting you and you try to cut down and eventually stop. It's the same for shisha. People say, oh, I don't smoke cigarettes, but I smoke shisha. No difference at all. It's the same thing. In fact, sometimes it's worse because the total volume of smoke that you're taking into your lungs. And the third is alcohol. Okay, if you're doing it judicious, uh, judi uh, in a, an informed way, it's fine. But if you're binge drinking alcohol, don't expect your diabetes to get better. It's as simple as that. So now, these are the common lifestyle changes, the most powerful that every person that has reversed their diabetes has integrated into their lifestyle plan. Nutrition will be more specific for you because I don't know if you have high blood pressure, I don't know if you have CKD, I don't know if you have a heart problem, but you've got the gist of it. It is lifestyle. Number one, some people get up dairy, some people get up gluten, their blood sugar levels start to get better. Why? Because they were anyway intolerant to inflammatory foods which affected their gut. And because they had inflammation in their gut, it affected their diabetes and their insulin sensitivity levels. So you see, when you break down the human body, it's really very simple. Human beings create their own set of complication by trying to avoid simplicity, avoid effort and discipline, and look for complication, thinking that, let me spend a little bit more of money for a complicated or a quick fix because I don't want to put in effort. Well, you will never get your type 2 reversed, your type 2 diabetes reversed if you're not willing to put in a little bit of effort, a little bit of discipline, and make the right lifestyle changes. It's possible to reverse your type 2 diabetes, and let me tell you something right now. Living with diabetes is not a good thing. Some people are forced to, they have complications, but for everyone else, if you're looking at a shortcut and saying, oh, but my sugar levels are under control, I'm on medication, great, I'm happy for you, but you're still living with a disease. And you're gonna age with that, it's gonna cause other problems, eventually, eventually. So you must always address the root cause of your problem, make lifestyle changes, and look to start the reversal process. And as you make these lifestyle changes, your own medical doctor will now see your levels getting stable, they'll start reducing your dosage, observing you, and eventually getting you off. If you come across a doctor who says that, hey, no matter what you do, you can't reverse your type 2 diabetes, be on this medication for a lifetime with no disrespect, change your doctor. You need a doctor who believes in you, who believes that you can get better, who can give you the right medication and also get you off it at the right time in a safe way. That is the integrity in medicine, whether it's Ayurveda, homeopathy, nutrition, allopathy, it follows a law of integrity and honesty. So sometimes you've got to make changes. You've got to change your nutritionist. You've got to change your homeopathic doctor. You've got to change your Ayurvedic doctor. You've got to change your allopathic doctor if they don't serve you for the right reasons. If you have faith that you can get better, but someone else is telling you can't, okay, you've got to change your protocol. It's okay. It's not a bad thing. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.